welcome to our third product battle that is being hosted by Creatio. I am your host, Alex Petrenko, product evangelist with Creatio. And today my guest is Chris Isbell from Martin Associates, uh, our partner and our dear friend. Hi, Chris. How are you today? Hey, I'm doing great, Alex. Happy to be here. How are you? Yeah, I'm perfect. Thank you for having the time for this product battle. Yeah, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah, I think it's going to be a very interesting session, and I'm pretty excited about doing this with you today, especially taking into account our uh, topic today, right? So we're going to be comparing the configuration capabilities of Creatio and uh, Microsoft Dynamics. Is that right, Chris? That is correct, as I understand it. <laughs> All right, perfect. Well, I know that a lot of our customers and prospects, they always take into account the configurability of their future CRM, of their future application, right? And for us, the fact that Creatio is, uh, you know, is, is capable of applying those changes to the ever-changing business reality has always been a huge advantage, right? And we've been, uh, you know, proving this point to our customers uh, over the years and every single time we do it, all of the prospects that see our product in action when I guess to changes are really uh, impressed by how flexible it is, by how simple it is to do. And what we wanted to do today is really to take, uh, you know, Creatia and one of our, you know, major competitors in the CRM space, Microsoft Dynamics, and compare the configuration of the application side by side against a specific use case, right, Chris? Perfect. Right. And yeah. the use case that we're gonna be uh, taking today is rather common, I would say, right? Uh, as we know, the business models of the organization change uh, quite frequently. All of the companies try to look to get new revenue streams to implement new business models, right? And if even when it gets to something simple as introducing a partner's channel, right? And a channel of sales through distributors, uh, for some of those is pretty new. And, uh, you know, a lot of those companies face challenges in actually uh, implementing those new business models. So right. today, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be actually comparing side by side, how would an organization using either Creatia or Microsoft Dynamics implement a new business model, taking and configuring as less as possible, as quickly as possible, and we're using some of the out-of-the-box components of the application as much as possible, right? And I would like to remind our audience and our attendees that on your broadcast screen, in the uh, bottom of the uh, of the screen, you have the option to vote for either Microsoft Dynamics or Creatio, depending on which one you like most. At any time, you can change your opinion. You can vote, uh, you know, towards our competitor or towards us, and definitely leave your questions feedback, uh, share your thoughts in the chat area, just so that we know what you think, we know how you feel about what you're seeing uh, during this product battle. Uh, and uh, just to kick this off, uh, Chris, if you don't mind, I'm gonna go first with the, with the demonstration, right? And I'm gonna be uh, just kicking it off in the way that we would normally do for any configuration of the system. So at this point, I'm going to just ask our uh, broadcast managers to switch from, uh, you know, the video of uh, the, you know, the presenters today and switch to my screen so that we can actually start working on the configuration of the product. So what you should be seeing on your screen right now, guys, is really the opportunity page, right? This is the base view, the out of the box view of the application as it is uh, provided and as it is being available, you know, through the deployment. And of course, if we wanted to somehow implement a new business model to introduce a new channel of sales uh, for the partners or distributors, right, we would need to make some crucial changes to the structure of the page to introduce a new typification of the opportunity uh, to make some changes to the workflow uh, that we're going to be running and of course to introduce new business processes that are going to be supporting this uh, you know this type of sale so in this case what we would need to do in order to actually start building the application right or building the first step is definitely working with the user interface configuration working with the definition of the data model and what you guys can see on the screen right now is our section wizard one of our primary tools for the system configuration 
right? Where our users can actually have a very simple drag and drop WYSIWYG kind of style of configuration of the application, right? Of course, in this case, what we can do is on the left hand side, say any kind of, you know, existing columns that are available in the data set and just simply drag and drop it to the user interface to drop it right there where you want it to be, right? And in addition to just reusing some of the existing columns, we can as well just take a completely new column and add it to the data set as well, right? So introduce a new column that has not been yet defined in the application. Uh, for example, the, uh, uh, the partner margin. Right, in this case, uh, as you can see, it's very simple to configure this. We just need to give it a caption, a title, uh, and give it a name for the database and save it. And the application would be just adding it straight away to the UI, would be adding it straight away to the structure of the application. And of course, I can continue building the UI here uh, in the same kind of style of configuration. If I need the, you know, a couple of new grid layouts or groups of fields, I can easily do those. I can add some additional, you know, details or mini to one uh, connections and really work flexibly with the whole changes of, to the user interface that is available here, right? And the way that we're trying to approach the changes to the, uh, to the application, to the UI, is really by empowering uh, the, you know, the citizen developers, the business analysts, the system administrators of the application to be able to take as much of a control ownership of these changes as they can, right? Just so that they are not limited, they're not tied to working with the classic development approach right and leveraging uh, a lot of uh, classic developments uh, you know that is usually provided by many companies and of course even though the application here is fully hosted in the clouds uh, it is very quickly changed the uh, those changes are being applied in maybe less than a minute depending on the amount of configuration and they are available straight away to all the users right so rolling out new data models rolling out new uh, you know additional data points that need to be used by the end users or making changes to the existing ones really take uh, very little time and a lot of our customers and partners actually take a lot of uh, you know leverage this uh, functionality uh, and configuration uh, capability of the platform so while we're saving the changes here which you can actually be see being applied momentarily so i think it was around 30 seconds uh, Chris, uh, I'm going to ask our broadcast managers to maybe change the presentation and the view towards your screen. And I'm going to ask you to kind of run the same kind of steps, right? Ha open up the configuration of your application. Show us how would you add uh, an existing column, maybe a new column to the data set. And how is the whole process looking on your side? Absolutely. Yeah, that was good. Thank you. Um, okay, so we are just checking out a quick dashboard. Going to jump over to opportunities, um, and you can see I'm looking at my open opportunities, e.g., just mm -hmm. a few clips that we have going. Um, just to give you a sample, let's open up our printer here. All right, so here's kind of the you know the pretty sales hub view of Dynamic CRM. You can see it's a pretty clean interface here, um, and we can see various different things similar to your guys' tab. But we're going to walk through, like you said, the same process of adding a new field. And we're going to add it over here into the main summary area that you see on the left. Yep. So to do that, we're going to jump into um, the customization area on the kind of the back end side of the system mm -hmm. and jump over to customize the system. I already have that window open. Um, for the sake of time, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now you can see inside of this customization area, there's a lot of things that are possible to be customized um, throughout the system. So, you know, option sets are basically, um, let's see, drop down options that you might have for fields. Yeah, like lookup um, values. Like lookup values, yeah. Similar to Creatio's lookup values, yeah. Yep. These option sets would be global and could be used across all kinds of different um, entities. So an entity in Dynamics is basically um, you know, roughly equivalent to like a database table or a section in Creatio. 
Um, we're going to roll down to opportunity. All right. In our opportunity, you can see there's lots of different things that we can customize. Um, we're going to be customizing the form. One thing I want to note in Dynamic CRM, you can have multiple different forms um, and you can assign these forms to different security roles and show you know, different fields on those different forms, you know, kind of based on who might need access or, you know, to see certain fields or not see certain fields. Um, thought being, you know, if you have, um, let's say somebody who extensively works with channel sales, you know, they might not care about all the fields that someone from inside sales might look like. Yep. So theoretically, you could have multiple forms to cover that. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what I like about this, Chris, while you're opening up the configuration of the opportunity, uh, what kind of drew my attention to is even though the front end, you know, the end user interface is kind of shiny and it's kind of this clean, like, uh, you know, kind of modern view over the CRM and the application that's very user friendly. When right. you get to the configuration side of uh, Dynamics, it kind of gets, you know, the old G uh, Windows <laughs> XP kind of system admin uh, where you're going to your device management or you're going into the printer setup and you have all of these kind of options and you really have to know what you're doing in order to get to the place where you need to be, right? It, it does take a, a bit of training when you're looking at um, through that, that sales view, kind of the, the new happy, you know, a dynamics interface and then, you know, getting into the back end. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, and I definitely want to discuss some of the like trainings the and uh, yeah, I would definitely want to discuss the adoption uh, and, you know, the developer adoption of the configuration, uh, you know, of this yeah, kind point. of sides when we get towards the end of this session, but please yep. carry on with the changes to the UI. Yeah, no worries. So you can see um, we have the general form layout, right? Our header, we have our summary tab and um, our different products tab. So you can see, even though on this form, it's laid out kind of vertically, um, when you're looking at the interface, these big products tab, summary tab are, are kind of a tab review of that. That's just kind of some visual magic that happens. So let's go add a new field real quick. Right from this form, as I'm doing it, I can just hit new field over on the right um, under my listing of all the fields. Yep. So it'll pop up here. All right, much like you, we'll add a new field. We'll call it um, partner margin. I can set the requirement for that field, whether it has to be filled in or not. In this case, I'm just gonna leave it optional. Um, business recommended just kind of adds like a, a little visual cue that, hey, you know, we'd like this field to be filled in, but you don't have to. Yeah. Um, uh, another thing, custom fields in the system can have field security enabled on them. Um, generally speaking, that's only for custom fields. Um, we'll give it a brief description. So this is channel partner margin. And here we get our field type. You can see there's a pretty good listing here. So um, a line of text, a multi-select option set, numbers, decimals. So we're just gonna say in this case, we'll make it a currency here. And um, we'll just keep it simple and you can see it's, we have a big min to max. I'll just leave that alone. So we'll quickly save and close. So we have a new field um, on the, or available to us to add to the form. Um, I'm gonna, it's a weird quirk here. If you add another new field, it kind of refreshes that field listing. Um, and we will call this partner margin, there we are. And you'll notice that Let's see, it adds one in the base currency as well. CRM is a multi-currency system. Of course, so yeah, I'm just, just like Croatia, right? So I right. uh, see, enabled yeah. because all of the global organizations that are using exactly. CRMs, right? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm going to drag partner margin in. We'll put it right under our B2B type here. So mm -hmm. people remember to fill it out. And we will save this change. So part of the fun of, of living in this 
environment is you can make all kinds of changes in the system, add new fields, modify the forms, add new forms, new views, whatever. But until you publish your changes, um, either system-wide, which I don't recommend doing very often, or specifically on this entity, which is generally speaking the safer method, um, until you publish, you know, your changes are not reflected in the interface. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and publish this customization real quick. At that point, it's publishing basically um, everything, all the changes that we made for the opportunity entity. Yeah, and you know what I've noticed, just like what you're uh, through the steps that you're doing now. And again, it's just catching my eye because you know I've been using Creation for so many years. I've been uh, demonstrating our configuration capability so many, uh, so many times over these years. Is that when when it gets to kind of make sort of dynamics, uh, you know, configuration. First of all, what you did, you had to add a field to the structure of the object, right? To go through a pretty, you know, long process of applying all of the base settings and base properties towards that field. And what you did next is only then you you know dragged it to the interface, and you were able to kind of have it where you want it to be. So that's kind of just creating a lot of uh, you know moving around of like too many clicks as of for me personally, right? But also like another thing that I've noticed when you were when you had that configuration site open, I've noticed like it's a pop up on top of a pop up, or like on top of a pop up. Yeah, and you have like three. Yeah, so it looks like you know just again I'm gonna be. I'm, you know, it's just personally for me, it just looks like when you're, you know, uh, have those annoying like ads like popping up all over the internet, why they invented the <laughs> pop-up blocker, right? Like this is kind of what, what is out there. Well, it's with us, you know, it's just clean. It's you have those different areas, just even one window that you're using for configuration uh, that you need to have open and available, right? But again, this is just me. Uh, I don't want to say anything about this. Some people actually like it that way. You know, some of them actually work with multiple open windows at the same time. Uh, it's just personal preferences. And exactly. Chris, I, yeah, and Chris, what I did notice is that you also have an area for the business rules definition, right? Uh, when you're talking um, about the interface. We do, absolutely. And I did want to mention that. So on that form, um, you know, if, if I go back into the form, you can create business rules, which is basically like, you know, mini JavaScript without having to code any JavaScript. Mm -hmm. um, so something in the case like, you know, in this case, B2B type, if we selected channel as an option, you know, we could show the partner margin field or make that field required or, um, you know, if it's not channeled and, you know, partner margin would be hidden or at least not required. So, yeah. yeah. Um, and how does the configuration look on, uh, on you know, inside of Microsoft Dynamics? Just so that well, we have like a little let's jump in here. A little peek right there. The business rule, yep. You can see it's kind of in the new um, Power App um, view and of, of data and everything. So I can yep. see, oh, here's my condition. Mm -hmm. I'll say, you know, on my um, on my entity, if my B2B type equals channel, I'll apply that. And then I would say, you know, I, these are the things you can do. You can lock, unlock fields, pop an error message, set a default field value in another field, um, make a field required or make it visible or not. Yeah. So you just kind of drag it over. Yep. Say, oh, okay. Now I'm going to make my partner margin visible mm -hmm. and apply that guy. And you save him and away you go. Okay, interesting. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty sweet. I mean, uh, they it's tried. Pretty to, nice. They've come a long way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, this this is a good touch. You know, trying to kind of visualize this process a little bit, almost as in adding like business rules and business in business processes, right? Where you have some sort of a conditioning and you can kind of branch it out. Uh, right. That's that's great. Uh, I will probably ask the uh, you know the broadcast managers to switch the presentation to my screen. So that we can also have a look at how exactly we do the business rule configuration on our side before jumping to our next kind of point of demonstration, which will be the workflow definition, right? And in great. this case, yeah, thank, and thank you, Chris, for uh, for the UI uh, demonstration. That was uh, pretty sweet. So what we're doing here is again, as part of our section wizard area, we've got the business rule set up, right? This is this is kind of the second area that we're working with. Uh, and in case we wanted to add a new business role, right? For us, this is where we're not doing the, you know, the visual configuration kind of a drag and drop, 
we've simplified it to the point where it's a simple if then condition, right? So this is where I can say that if in our field for uh, type, we have a specific, you know, lookup value, or I can as well just, you know, compare these to a field value, to another field value, to a system setting, to some attributes. And in case we're saying that this is going to be a partner sale, right, we then want to make a, a field visible on the page, right? And we're saying that we're going to be adding the partner margin, right? So in our kind of, uh, you know, in the way that we see it, it is a little bit easier when you have if-thens as conditions, right? So because when you're going through the visual configuration, uh, it might be a little bit of uh, complicated to keep an eye like a very simple way of understanding on a single screen, what's the condition, what is the result of that condition being met, right? Uh, and, but again, uh, you know, this is just uh, something that we believe in, right? And one more thing that I wanted to mention before we jump further, right? Another third area of the section wizard that we really didn't touch upon right now, and I don't think we're going to be looking at it as well, but I wanted to check with you, Chris. In Croatia, when you are going through the changes with the help of the section wizard, right, you still have access to the source code of the page that is actually going to be storing all of the changes that were done by that user, right? Because we believe that you should have the seamless transition between what you can figure through local drag and drop tools and what you can continue the, and you know what you can develop through more of a pro development approach classic development approach within microsoft dynamics uh do you have the capability of actually kind of have the seamless transition where everything you do through drag and drop is reflected in the code and you can just pick it up uh any time you want yeah not exactly you can um Kind of on the back end of the forums, you can do some JavaScripting and you can see any JavaScript libraries that you might have done. Um, other than that, you are, you know, kind of building a plugin that's using the, you know, approved, you know, Microsoft.net CRM code base and toolkit to, to get things done. Yeah. Yeah, so it's not something that is well straight away, like out of the box offering. You it is not like an, an add -on. highly visible like that, correct? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, I got it, I get it. I mean, that's, uh, you know, no harsh feelings on this side. Uh, but uh, let's carry on with our topics uh, today, right? Because, uh, you know, we can continue talking about the specifics oh, yeah. of the UI configuration for hours and days. And I'm afraid not everybody has that time. <laughs> But uh, what we're going to do now, we're going to start working with the other side of the configuration, uh, which is going to be the definition of the workflow, right? Or the major stages in the opportunity life cycle, if you would uh, call it that way. Or in other words, you know, taking this progress bar on top and configuring it to be specific towards a specific type of opportunity that we want to uh, follow, right? Direct sale or partner sale. And what we do in this case, we're actually going to be reusing our, um, you know, dynamic case management framework and approach where we can say that based on a specific type of the records, right? And this is what we're actually have defined as the primary differentiator for our type of opportunity, right? We're going to have a specific type of workflow, that progress bar that is going to be displayed for the end user. And what we're doing in this case is, again, providing a simple uh, tool to be able to define that high-level uh, view over the stages, right? And to be able to actually say, these are the stages that I want to have. These are the steps that I want to have within those. So what we can do in this case is say that if we are going to be doing a direct sale, right? On the right-hand side, we just need to tie this specific case settings or DCM settings to a specific type uh, of the sale, right? And then you've got the configuration of the stages. So at any moment, if you're, you can actually reuse the base view that you have, right? You can reuse the base settings that are already available, uh, but we can say that, okay, we're first gonna be doing the qualification, the presentation. Actually, let's just switch it uh, straight away to partner because it kind of makes more sense to do it for partners first, and then we're going to switch to direct sales. So let's say we're doing qualification presentation. And in this case, for the first two stages, I kind of picked it up from the existing list of stages, right? Uh, because they're already stored in the database, there is no need to re-add them uh, as such. 
right? But if I wanted to actually add a new stage, right? For example, the partner selection, I can actually see that even though I don't have this value in the system, it would actually offer me to add a new one straight away, right? Without leaving this area, without going to the uh, value definition, as you just called in Dynamics, right? Without leaving to our lookups area, but just do it from the same area right here. Uh, then do, you know, and the system would add it on the fly just to make it easier for the end user, uh, you know, without requiring them to actually go through multiple areas. Uh, and we're almost done here with the definition of the case, right? Um, I'm just gonna add like a couple of a closing stages, but a few more things that I wanted to bring up here is that obviously we have quite a lot of control over these stages, right? First of all, on the right-hand side, you can see all of the properties of this stage where basically one of the two, you know, most basic ones would be saying that we want to group these two stages together so they're not taking too much space on the screen on the UI, right? I can as well say that I wanna apply a specific color coding towards this stage so that it's more visual at any moment that the user is opening. And of course I could add a, you know, dedicated color to each of the stages uh, if, this is something that I want to do. I'm, you know, more, uh, you know, uh, minimalistic in this case. So green and uh, red to say that this is lost or maybe gray to say something that's in drafts or like being prepared or something planned. But overall, like having different color codings or specific types of opportunity processes and workflows, it's kind of like, you know, it kind of makes sense to me. Uh, and of course, on the list of the stages right here, right, we can as well define what are the possible next stages and what are the possible previous stages that the users can move to this stage uh, to and from basically, <laughs> right? So in this case, we can actually control how the users are gonna be navigating between the stages. And it's gonna align quite nicely with uh, some other you know, definition of the transitional conditions within the case settings. But basically I can say that from qualification, we cannot go to uh, proposal, right? We cannot go to contracts and we can only go to, uh, you know, presentation partner selection, close lost. And of course, if you're passing qualification, you might not be able to move to it at all, right? So this is again, going to be limiting the choice of the end user. And it's going to be like a little bit of a, you know, bringing more intuitive approach of working with the, with the opportunities, because if they cannot select that stage, obviously they cannot go there at this specific moment of time, right? Uh, and of course, uh, at any time, right, for each of the stages, I can add any kind of tasks that in this case are gonna be a little bit limited because based on our uh, user feedback, our customer voice, we've uh, received, you know, th that this is kind of the primary requirement towards being able to set a dynamic cases because more options are of course available within the process management engine, right? Uh, and dynamic case management engine is also kind of considered to be a tool for even power users, right? Like supervisors, managers that should have the ability to go and quickly change the way that their users are following these structures and these workflows. Uh, but basically what we can do in this case is use any kind of approval Right, again, this can be a simple sign off. This might have like a couple of levels of approvals with simple transitions, right? We can change access rights to the record, uh, create or modify something that is related to, the, to this opportunity, perform a task, send an email and run a SOP process. And of course, I'm gonna talk about running SOP processes a little bit later, uh, right? But basically, Even if we're adding these tasks right on the right hand side, you'll see the settings for this activity and for this action. Uh, those of you have, and Chris, you probably yourself have seen this before in our, in, in our process engine. This is very similar to our activity creation within the process management. Uh, and the idea here is to provide this kind of a consistent UI, consistent approach towards the configuration. Well, obviously we can assign different, you know, types of uh, and categories so towards this task have different uh, duration and when it should start, it should be shown in calendar, uh, you know, assign it to different user user groups uh, and have it connected to not just the opportunity, but let's say to the account itself, 
to make sure that we are actually maintaining the full history of interaction across all of the application, right? right? And what I mentioned in terms of having the ability to control the transition here is that we can either say that this task should be performed at the very beginning of the stage, right? Or after the previous step is completed, which is qualified customer, we're gonna see it on the list right here. Uh, and I can as well say uh, that this step is actually required, so the users cannot move forward without completing it. And if we have a specific result towards this stage, we're then gonna be automatically switching to the next stage in the, in the case, right? So even though this is very limited from a point of view of, you know, this is the only list of the business rules that I have to choose from, but if you think about it, when you're talking about very simple design mode, very simple and quick, uh, you know, guideline creation for your end users without any business, uh, you know, business process management training or knowledge whatsoever, you are still capable and able of creating all of these tasks pretty quickly, right? And have this framework, framework of actions available for your end users. And keep in mind that at all times, of course, if you're saying that, you know, we're actually changing our mind. We need to move these around between the stages. Perhaps the whole partner selection stage should be, uh, let me just take this uh, with an activity, can be just moved simply across the whole workflow and the whole life cycle, right? So making changes on this side would take less than uh, five minutes, 10 minutes, right? Creating a whole uh, new case would take me uh, probably, you know, uh, under 30 minutes as an outline of what I want my users to do, what I want my users to follow. But Chris, probably at this point, enough about us. Uh, let's switch to your screen. Let's have our broadcast manager switch to your uh, Dynamics instance, and let's have a look at what is happening in the configuration world specifically for this kind of uh, workflow definition uh, with Microsoft Dynamics. Absolutely. Um... So I'm, I'm back on our opportunity um, and you'll see we have um, a process running, opportunity sales process. Yep. Dynamic CRM calls these um, business process flows. So they're a unique distinct um, category from a, a, like a, a normal, let's say workflow process. Okay. Um, and one of the fun things about um, these processes is when you make any record, you know, you know, any, in this case, opportunity, by default, it's going to get, you know, whatever process is defined and you can define a hierarchy of processes um, based on, you know, security roles or different types and things like that. Um, so we have one defined in the system right now, our opportunity sales process again, and you can see what stage you're at, how long you've been at that stage. And if I, um, jump in here and look at my qualify. These are the um, pieces of data that need to get filled out. Um, and you can, if there's a little red asterisk, that means it's required. So I have to fill that out um, in order to move on to the next stage. So mm -hmm. just a little bit about the visuals um, and let's kind of jump in and edit this process. So again, I'm going to get the phone out of the way and jump into not our customization area, but our second tab. And I'm going to go over to processes. And again, this is kind of on the, the magical back end a little bit. And we're going to look specifically for business process flows. And you can see there's, you know, you can define multiple for any entity in the system. But again, we're looking at opportunity sales process. So similar to um, the screen that we showed when we were creating business rules on a form, it's a similar type view using the Power App. Um, so every process starts, right? It's gonna get um, the qualify stage. So if I look at my settings for here over on the right, I can name this stage anything I want. Um, and I can pick from one of these um, eight kind of predefined categories. Um, and, you know, they just kind of mean different things, but, you know, they are what they are. And sure, But can you add new categories uh, towards these kind of stage definition as we have it on our side? 
Um, not easily, no, but they can kind of, the category is loosely needed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see where you're going. The main thing it's, it's doing is the uh, is you can name it whatever you want to name it. Um, and then one of the you know these business process flows can span different opportunities. So let's say you started on a lead. Um, there's a process flow for that, and you know if it reaches a certain stage, you know qualify, it will turn into an opportunity and start running, and continue along that path. So if I had an opportunity that wanted to get to a quote. I could make a single business process flow that spans across an opportunity and a quote all within one process flow. And just okay. relate, define how we relate those entities. Um, so further, we could add business rules for this, um, for this stage, for that, for that opportunity if we needed to. But um, for now, we will just look up here. One of the things that we did um, is how you, you know, in Creatio, you had two cases based on what type it was, you know, partner or not partner. Um, in our process flow, we make a condition, much like we did before, and say, oh, okay, if this field type, and this field type is defined right here in step one, it's required mm -hmm. so that we have the correct information. If this field is, let's say, inside sales, we're going to follow this process up here on the top. However, if it's not inside, meaning it's channel, um, and again, you can kind of mess with the logic here, and you can have multiple conditions. Um, if I needed to add a second one, I could pick that, um, or a third. So you can have multiple conditions and pick some and or, or logic to see how that applies out. Um, much like an if-then, but just a kind of a, a GUI type version. Um, so if this is channel, we have a new stage here that I dragged in um, called channel. And when you're building these stages, you're defining, okay, I have my stage, I have its name. These are the things that I can do as a part of this. It's filling out data. I can call a workflow. Um, a custom action, which is a, again, a special type of workflow. Um, and they're, you know, Microsoft is working on being able to, to link up to call other flows, like, you know, power flow. Okay. Well. Okay. So based on what I, what I, what I kind of see here, right, there's no separate area, uh, put, let's put it this way, right. So work with the uh, dynamic case management framework as such, right. Because the way that they're usually structured is that they base out of those stages and then under each stage you have to have and have to see what is really dedicated to that one. This is kind of combined view, right? And uh, this is kind of a way of, you know, maybe showing it a little bit more compact from the point of view where you can see all kinds of, you know, types of sales and like, you know, definitions and, uh, you know, dependencies between type of the opportunity and stages that are going to be involved but doesn't give you really that single and holistic view of every single type of action that's going to be completed within that stage, right? Whether this um, is a uh, develop or channel or anything else. Um, I would agree with that a little bit. Um, you know, it does um, where you're, you know, it does define, you know, what pieces of information, basically, you know, fields on the record that you need to fill out on each stage. Sure, but um, didn't you have the same kind of cap capability when we were talking about the business rules definition? Isn't that kind of creating the, you know, the functionality duplication? And this is, is that like a little bit confusing for users? Um, you know, it's a good, good question. Um, it's a little bit different. Um, if you, you know, it's a little bit different. Yeah. So the business rules don't necessarily define what stages you're in. Um, mm -hmm more just you know what how fields interact with each other whereas you know our business process flow here is is saying okay you know if i'm looking at an opportunity i'm in this certain stage and i need to fill out these pieces of information so you're defining you know kind of the process and the and the core 
things that you want to gather for that opportunity. Similar to how you guys have your um, your dynamic case management. Um, similar. Similar. <laughs> yeah. Similar. I think that's, that's I think that's the key word, right? Similar, but not quite the same. Uh, special, like a special right. action, special type of workflow that you can launch on that side. Correct. So All right, yeah. Add a new stage here. I'm just going to drag a new stage. Yep. We'll get the name. Uh, partner. gathering and we'll just say it's in the identify stage all right <laughs> okay. so now um, if I'm looking at our stage we need to fill out um, some information so we have at least one data step we're going to do and we're going to pick that partner margin field that we added um, and we'll just make it required um, further if I needed to on the stage if I'm looking at components, you know, again, I could call a workflow um, or a custom action and have a, a workflow run based on whatever criteria is needed. And from there, we'll jump into the, the closed stage as well. Yeah. Um, okay. So and now, uh, can you can you kind of move? Can you change like switch places between uh, that new stage that you just added for partner info and channel? Uh, can you move around the steps within those stages or is that kind of like if it's sitting there, it's sitting there forever unless you take it out? Um, we can move them around and kind of change the connections a little bit. Mm -hmm. For example, you can see if, um, if I wanted um, I forgot to hit my apply button. Um, I can drag him to the front here if I wanted to or drag him back. Um, and then if I wanted to, you know, kind of change how my things are connected, I can mess with our connector here and, you know, put it back up in a, in a different spot instead of leaving it here. Yeah, I see. But, okay, perfect. Well, again, you know, as I'm looking at this, this is a little bit of, you know, overcomplicated in my opinion when it gets to, <laughs> uh, you know, how the users are accessing this when you kind of start going through, you know, again, the structure of, Know, opening in different windows. Well, good thing we didn't go to the blue screen to the safe mode of uh, Windows, right? Didn't have to uh, call out <laughs> through the bootstrap or whatever. Uh, that's that's good enough for now. Um, and again, right? So this is just a very different approach. How sort of how we would be defining those stages and steps underneath them, right? Some functionality, in my opinion, is maybe duplicated. Maybe it's just you know different uh, ways of approaching it, and it's not a problem. Well, at this moment, we're just, I'm just going to ask the progress managers to switch back to my screen uh, because we have only 15 minutes left for this session, right? And I did want to leave like a few minutes in the end to talk about the, uh, you know, the adoption, the uh, trainings, uh, limitations as well. Now, what we were kind of talking about right uh, here and what you've mentioned, right, is that Microsoft Dynamics, of course, under each stage can actually launch different types of actions and can as well run workflows. And of course, in our case, since the process engine is, uh, you know, tightly connected to the dynamic case management framework, we of course allow the same kind of functionality. And again, another thing to keep in mind that uh, our vision is that the DCM is, you know, a perfect tool for more of a, a streamlined, you know, agile processes, chaotic processes, even when you don't have a clear structure of actions or you don't really care about their order, right? Where the process engine is best working uh, within those environments where you have that clear structure, you know when exactly things should be happening based on the results of previous steps. And of course, a lot of our customers take advantage of actually leveraging the DCM first to outline the high level structure of their processes. And once they understand the structure better, they substitute those steps with the business process, right? So it's kind of a, uh, you know, like learning curve towards understanding their own organizational processes uh, through working with the application. And of course, at any moment, we can inbuilt this, you know, this element of a sub process call out and choose one of the existing business processes that we already have in the application or even jump into creation of a new one, right? And the idea here is that, of course, this is going to be the place where we're going to be leveraging the full power of, uh, you know, business process management engine of Creatio, our bread and butter, 
our you know core component of the application something that we've been uh, you know solely developing for the past 16 years or even more and you know this is where our heart is at now obviously if i wanted to reach the screen i would probably i could probably go to the process library uh, spend maybe two clicks or three clicks to get there right but why would i need to switch if i can actually access it within the case manager again like simple navigation a uh, simple way of going around your system, right? And in this case, we see that there is a specific process that I'm reusing, right? I can see some of the properties of this process. At any moment, I could as well simply apply changes to it uh, to look at the properties of any action, right? And I can actually see that on my right-hand side, the settings panel is actually pretty much the same as we've seen. Uh, in the dynamic case management settings, right? So again, it's kind of consistent approach, consistent user interface and way of configuration. And this is what we're trying to deliver across all of our applications. And definitely if I wanted to add some additional steps, uh, some additional activities and actions towards this business process, I could simply take and kind of drag an item out of it, right? Based on the most common type of actions that is being that, that can be used. Right, and I can then actually change and switch the type to either user engaging elements. If I, uh, if this is what I need to use, like uh, you know, asking a system question, opening up uh, an edit page, or using a you know, auto generated page, pre-configured one, sending emails and approvals, uh, or of course switch to a list of system actions. Right, those where we really show the power of Creatio through you know data uh, manipulation, uh, you know, the base crud on an individual record basis or bulk running formula calculations, changing access rights, and what is most important, really calling web services and predicting data, right? So even within the process engine, we're using these more advanced features and tools uh, to kind of, uh, you know, have this single environment of controlling your, uh, your system environment, right? Your application environment. Because even though I'm kind of looking at this specific process as a combination of user engaging elements and system uh, elements, right? This is best practice. This is where you encourage the user to be involved only at those steps and that point where it is absolutely necessary for him to be involved. And the system does the rest of the steps for him. But we, of course, are able to create completely system process, non-human centric, and those processes that are gonna be, you know, just running data update, data integrations on a uh, event basis or in a timer basis, since those are just different types of starting points that we can support, right? And within the same tool, really build up the muscle of the CRM application, of the studio application, of a you know, local application, business app as such. So there's no need to learn different tools and multiple ways of configuring the application. You've got your UI, you've got your section design, you've got your DCM, you've got your process engine, and you're good to go. You're good to build your system as you want it to be working, right? And that is, of course, a very high level overview. We are still unfortunately limited. So I'm gonna just ask, uh, you know, for the Brightness managers to switch to your screen. Uh, Chris, if you may just give us a very brief, like two, three minute overview of what we have in, uh, of what you have in Microsoft Dynamics uh, and we'll continue with the session. Absolutely, yep, yeah, absolutely. So we're jumping, um, we're back in our processes area. Um, I've opened up a process that um, a workflow has Dynamics would call this mm -hmm. um, to let's say you know when you when uh, you select channel op you know you're gonna send an email to whomever maybe assign it so here I am in there our I guess kind of the as you termed it earlier the OG method of of workflows um, and CRM um, so if logic conditional branches all that fun stuff um, and then you can add as many steps and logic in here as you need to and keep digging down as you, as you need to. Um, what you can do is create, update records, um, assign them, send emails, um, and perform custom actions or maybe change the status, like if you needed to reopen yeah. an opportunity or something like that, um, stop it. And then you'll see down here, there's a lot of other things. You can create custom plugins or you know buy or download solutions into Dynamics. Um, and you know further enhance the system you know to do all kinds of, of so things like a marketplace marketplace of, of extensions and add-ons right 
basically yeah yep. okay yeah um, and then well. for the for the workflow it can run on demand meaning i just run it manually when i need to it can run as a child process which would be um, like if you're calling it from the business process flow or you're calling it from another workflow um, or it can run automatically you know whether when a record is created um, a, a field value changes it gets assigned it gets deleted something like that so there's multiple different ways to handle when the process starts um, and how it gets triggered um, and then you know the various different things you can do in the system so yeah in interesting as you know and even as i'm looking at this kind of configuration of the workflow which is not really a workflow right this is like a sequence of steps uh, I'm kind of wondering when was it like last updated, right? Because when you were configuring the business roles, you kind of had a little bit of a visual configuration, right? You had like a little bit of a, um, you, you know, like a flow wish kind of style right. configuring, right? right. Uh, and this is really uh, like, you know, conditions to complete uh, steps and sequences. I remember, uh, you know, Apple had some of these kind of workflow steps when they were trying to push for their automator uh, that didn't really work out and they kind of abandoned it uh, many years ago. <laughs> uh, and, uh, you know, this is obviously not, uh, you know, BPMN uh, 2.0 uh, kind of based. This is just their interpretation, like their way of analyzing, looking at automation steps. Right? This is, uh, yeah, this is the the very... It's been around for uh, many versions of their software. They are, um, so I'd say the vast majority of CRM customers are used to this interface that have been messing with things. What Microsoft is doing is is moving everything to Flow and Power Automate, which gives you a lot more um, interoperability and, and features and functionality. Um, you just need to have that Flow Power Automate is, is yep. in the Microsoft yep. Office stack. And then, then you get the the full feature of that, but I, I went with the the OG version because that's that's what uh, what most of the CRM customers. That... Well, we're also talking. We're comparing here like out of the box solutions, right? Uh, what would you get if you would just subscribe or go and like get a trial? Uh, and uh, you know, th this was kind of like one of the conditions uh, about like comparing these products. And yeah. I see where, I see where you mean here. And maybe just a few questions before we kind of stop the presentation here. Uh, just if you could remind me, the calling to the web services, data prediction, running, uh, those are not available within this tool. You have to have a third-party power app to do that. Within this part, you would need the Power Automate to, to do those web services and data prediction pieces, yeah. Okay, okay, perfect. Uh, kind of. And uh, we're talking about also like data update, data manipulation, right? Like adding data in bulk or in a single record, uh, updating some records, deleting them. Is that available within this kind of tool or not exactly? Um, using this one, you can update, you know, um, single records pretty much. Um, and then um, with Power Automate, you know, you have a lot more flexibility to to build out integrations and, and bulk read data. I see, I see, okay. All right, well, uh, in this case, uh, Chris, uh, I'm probably gonna ask our broadcast managers to stop sharing our screens, Perfect. right? Just so that we can uh, call this as a completed demonstration of the product capability. Uh, and let's probably just spend a couple of minutes, uh, you know, having just a general discussion as we usually do about, you know, when comparing some, uh, some products. And first of all, I wanted to thank you, uh, you know, thank you very much for, uh, you know, spending this time with us, uh, showing, you know, um, actual dynamics configuration capability. It was a fun ride uh, for me personally, uh, and I did really enjoy it. So uh, Chris, a few, a few questions here, right, is uh, definitely about the adoption, right, of these kind of tools. What are the training schedules like? Uh, what are the, you know, how long are the trainings? How long does it take for a system admin or I believe a developer in, in the case of Microsoft Dynamics to actually adopt the application, adopt those configuration uh, configuration tools? You know, that's a good question. Um, the the easy answer is, is it depends on the person, you know, doing the learning. Well, of and course, yeah. They have already, of course. But um, Microsoft has um, a very good documentation site. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, docs.microsoft.com where you can see this. Um, they have a number of user guides, training videos out on. Um, so they do have some sort of a, like community approach and, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure. Community approach and, you know, there are more, you know, guided like in-person or, you know, video led, you know, webinar based training mm -hmm. sessions as well to actually get, you know, certified on, you know, the system administration side of, of Dynamics DRM. Um, and then again, you know, as a partner, we we're happy to train our customers to do anything that, of that they feel they can learn. Of course. Well, yeah. you know, one of the reasons why I'm kind of jumping into this comparison, because we see that the adoption uh, cycle of uh, creation tools is rather, uh, rather quick, right? The, our users don't really take a lot of time to learn these tools for configuration and like where to find them, uh, which drawdowns you have to open, which errors you have to go. Do you need the bootstrap? Do you need to be safe or oh, enter the safe mode on your uh, on your computer and your laptop to actually get there? Uh, and of course, we as well provide a certain ecosystem for our customers and users and partners, right? You've uh, used that ecosystem yourself. We do have uh, you know our academy services with the self-learning with guided learning with the personal learning uh, you know a lot of videos and documentation that is being updated constantly yeah. so I, I think maybe this is somewhat where we would compare again i'm not going to be uh, you know talking directly about the time to adopt because this is again uh you know kind of subjective in my opinion right but i i can see from the complexity of this tool of these tools maybe it's going to take a little bit longer right and probably, um, I will add, there's a, probably Dynamics, you know, one of their strongest points is there's a really, really great, strong community around them. Um, oh, a lot of course, of they have been on the market for many years, right? While, they, yeah. they, they had their time to grow their community. Uh, and definitely, this is starting from the point that those people that were probably developing on .NET many, many years ago, right, kind of migrated towards that community over the right. years. So that's kind of normal, right? Uh, but definitely one of those questions that we like to bring up uh, during product battles are pricing and limitations, right? So yeah. what are the kind of, what's the price point when it gets to license to configure the application, right? And what are the limitations staying behind the configuration of uh, Microsoft Dynamics? Okay, so, um, you know, a, a, you'd need to license, let's say you had a, a user that was going to get in and do all the like, system configuration, everything, they would have a normal user license. That's a normal price point for dynamic CRM. Mm -hmm. um, and again, you know, kind of based on, let's say the professional or the enterprise version, you know, you're going to have a little more power there and the ability to link up to something like power automate and power flow and all that kind of stuff versus, you know, kind of having Which is going to be extra cost, cost extra subscription, part. right? Um, you know, it it comes kind of with uh, the enterprise level, um, but it's also you know married in with your Office 365 subscription and what you might have already. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of Microsoft Office 365 users. You can buy it right through the portal um, and sign up for everything. So based on your licensing, you know, if you're a big Microsoft shop and you've already got that, you yep. know, it's a big selling point. Um, so that's that's one of the perks. Okay, yeah. Well, just to, you know, for a point of comparison, again, uh, our price point for the configuration, we don't charge for extra for the admin uh, license for the configuration license, right? Uh, you're getting you know, the full control and full access to the configuration mode as you subscribe with uh, Create Show. Uh, the price point for, you know, the base underlying platform configurability is really $25 per user per month, which is incredible when it gets to the point of building apps and configuration in general, right? Uh, the sales license starts at 35. And of course, uh, again, you know, I will continue this conversation for many, many hours. Uh, you're an incredible guest to have. Thank you for joining us today. At this point, I'm probably gonna just close out the session. Uh, just wanted to mention that the votes of our, uh, uh, you know, attendees today have broken down around 75% pro creation, 25 pro, Microsoft Dynamics. I wanted to thank all of our assets uh, for sharing their, uh, you know, their votes, sharing their ideas and thoughts on what they've seen during this session. Uh, Chris, this has been an incredible uh, 
pleasure to have you here on our product battle. Uh, and we just wanted to announce that our next product battle is going to be hosted on July 16th, at the same time when we're going to be comparing Creatio and uh, very, as long, very long awaited Salesforce.com. So mm -hmm. I encourage everybody to join us on July 16th, same time uh, for that comparison uh, with Salesforce.com. Chris, thank you again very much for joining. Uh, and I hope to talk thank to you. you soon and have you as a guest on one of these uh, in the nearest time. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one.